Hi, welcome to Relish Books. Today I'm talking about how books are like food. Now from that um, title, you're probably thinking I'm going to say something about how while food nourishes our body, books nourish our minds, our intellects, our imaginations, our intelligence. And while all of that is very true, that's not what I'm talking about. The comparison that I want to make is to do with variety and quality. So if you think about all the vast different types of food as the different genres of books, and then you think about the different quality expectations that you have of all those different types of books, sometimes so I want to address like some, some misconceptions that people have about genre and about genre quality and I think that this is kind of a good picture at least for my mind um, this is a good way to illustrate that and maybe some mistaken conceptions of these things so if you think about um, you have like fine excellent dining like it, an old beautiful restaurant where just the finest old-fashioned food in the world is served it's um, simple um, but excellent. And those would be our classics. And then you have everything in between, maybe the very innovative, um, imaginative food that is being put out in our modern restaurants as maybe like our modern uh, literary types of books. Everything on down to fast food, maybe gas station food, as like your thrillers, your romances, your murder mysteries, stuff like that. So it's easy to see, you know, we even, we use this terminology um, without even thinking about it. You know, we understand this allegory. People refer all the time to reading books, kind of like comfort food books or junk food books. We understand this, but I want to take it a little further. Um, sometimes people seem to excuse bad quality in writing because of the genre that it's in. Now, there, the quality that you expect from a thriller, like a modern thriller or a modern, just a modern fiction, right? The quality that you expect from that is not the same as what you expect from like a grand old classic. But within that genre, you do expect a certain amount of quality. It's like if you go to a fast food restaurant, your expectation is not to be served a five-star beautiful meal like you would in the most expensive restaurant in the world. That is not your expectation. But you do have a certain expectation. Generally speaking, um, maybe you're going to the fast food place because you're craving something um, hot and salty and moist. And that's your expectation. And so even though it's just a fast food restaurant, if they give you something that's dry and bland and cold, you're going to be very disappointed. And it's no good just writing it off and being like, well, what do you expect from a fast food restaurant? You did have an expectation of quality. And too often, People excuse bad writing in certain genres, um, children's books, young adult books in particular. They read this crappy writing and they excuse it because of the genre. They say, well, this is the genre that that's in. We can't expect great literature. No, you don't need to expect great literature, but there should be a standard for what it should be. And so I think, yeah, too often people just use the excuse of genre, and absolutely, like I said, absolutely you have different expectations from different genres the way you do with different foods, but there is still a quality within that type, within that genre. Um, and so that's kind of one half of it. The other thing um, is the way that people read. Um, you could think about, um, just like with food, 
there are like food snobs and there are book snobs for sure. Um, people who will only eat fine, excellent, highest quality ingredients food. And then there are people who prefer more basic stuff. That's fine. They understand that this is their personal taste, their personal opinion, and they recognize um, that there are different levels of quality in all of this. They recognize that there's differences, right? And while I think it's good to be open-minded, I do completely understand those people who have their particular thing that they like and they're not interested in trying um, that many new things. I understand that. What drives me particularly crazy though are readers who seem to have this almost boastful um, way of thinking about reading who, I mean, I've met people like this who say, oh, I just love reading. And by that, they mean that they love reading everything. They read things non-discriminately. Um, you could give them like a great Dickens classic, you give them Bleak House and they burn through it, they devour it and they're like, oh, that was so great, I loved it, I love reading. And then you give them some horrible young adult thing, maybe like a one of those cheap series, like a Wings of Fire or something like that. You give them this book and they burn through it and they're like, oh, it was so great. I loved it. I love reading. In some ways, maybe I even like that better than the other one. They completely look at them as being on the same plane. And that's like those, um, if people did that with food, I feel like they wouldn't be as boastful about it. Maybe they would, I don't know. If they're like, oh yeah, I just love eating and I just love all kinds of food and you would give them like the most expensive, beautiful steak in the world and they would eat it up and be like, oh, it was amazing, I loved it. And then give them some dry old bone of like a gas station burger and they eat that up and they're like, oh, I loved it. In some ways it was even better than the other thing. I just love all food because I just love eating. Um, so many people, it seems, are like that about reading. They're like, oh, I just love reading. And to them, saying that they love reading means that they just love everything. They have no conception of quality, of different levels of quality. They'll recognize differences in like story and style, but they have no conception whatsoever of quality. And... I don't know, that just annoys me. I think it annoys me, like I said, in that they look on that as a good thing. And maybe, maybe I am being a snob. I am a bit of a snob. Um, maybe I should look at that more as a good thing. But I don't know, that just goes against all my thoughts and feelings about books. So anyway... Those are some thoughts that I was having. You can apply this in, you could apply this in a million different ways, you know, about how in different moods you want different foods, different books, um, and that's all totally legitimate. So I'm kind of using, I'm kind of using two halves of this. On one hand, to argue that there is quality even in lower genres there is quality among those things and there are good things to be had from them but you have to still have standards even among those different types different genres and then also to say that not all books are made equal just like not all foods are made equal and there should be a recognition of quality difference between these different things. So I don't know if that was clear. I was just, all these thoughts were like running through my head this morning. So I thought I would share them. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.